Hi, I'm Mike DeGriesling and welcome to Kraken CGI. Now in this tutorial we'll explore the basics of the viewport configuration and how we can navigate our way around them. So, rather than waste any more time, let's get cracking. So what we have here is our standard layout which consists of four viewports. Three orthographic and one perspective. Now orthographic simply means a two-dimensional plane of a three-dimensional object and that's precisely what we have here. In this viewport we can see it represents the front. This one the top and this one the left. And this is our perspective view which gives us a three-dimensional look at our object. Notice also that this is being shown as a solid whereas in these viewports they're being shown as wireframes which is the standard setting. As you can see in our perspective it's set to smooth and highlights and that's what we have. If we left click our mouse button there it is, smooth and highlights is checked. If we wanted to see it in wireframe then simply click wireframe. There we go. I'm just going to switch that back to smooth and highlights for a moment. Now next. Yes, we have a gold or yellow band surrounding this viewport and that's just telling us that it's the active viewport. We're not restricted to that, we can use any of these viewports if we wish and the way we select it is, and I recommend this, use the right key on your mouse bump to select. Most people when they first start will use the left key. Now if the scene is full of geometry the problem with that is that you're going to select a piece of geometry. Nine times out of ten you'll do it and once you've done it you'll make some kind of modification that well you didn't notice and then a little bit further down the line you'll say well what the hell went wrong there? How come that's like that? And it's because you went in to select that viewport and you clicked with the left mouse key. So if you're going to select a viewport always click it with the right and then you avoid that issue. Let's pop back there. Notice in the top right hand section of each viewport there is a box. We call that the view cube and it basically helps us orientate ourselves about the screen. Um, at the moment we can see this in a three-dimensional view and it's well set to perspective now. Let me just click that and you'll notice that the scene has now changed to reflect the left. I want to have a look at the bottom. Great. I want to have a look at the back. The top. And of course we can go north, south, east and west. So let's go north. I could rotate it. Oh, I'm feeling sick now. Definitely feeling sick now. And this little icon up here means, God, let's go home. And there we are, back home. As a new user to Max, you'll probably find the view cube quite helpful, but as you become more proficient, you'll find it tends to get in your way. So, for future reference, this is how we switch it off. Go to the little plus there, left click with your mouse, view cube, just click on that one, and then uncheck show the view cube. And there we go. No longer show. Okay, for this tutorial we'll put it back. View cube, show the view cube. So now you can play around with it till your heart's content. Actually let's remain with this um, topic for a moment longer so I can just highlight something for you. Uh, we're going to go to the front view so I'm selecting that by right clicking on my mouse button. Now we can see our view cube here as a simple 2D representation. It states front, my geometry is showing me that it's front and between the open and close brackets here it's saying front 
also. Now, I'm going to go to one of these little tabs, say the left tab, click on that. The view cube is saying left. My geometry is showing me that it's the left face and it's saying left between the open and close brackets. But if I go again to, uh, let's say, hit the top tab there, it says top, the geometry is reflecting that, but now it's saying orthographic here. To me, that should say top, and it's not. So that's something for you to be aware of. Okay, so I want to take it back to the front view. I'm going to left click on that section there, and there we are, front view. But if you've noticed, there is the letter F to the right of that. That's a hotkey. So if I didn't really wish to enter this menu, I could have simply hit the F key and that would have taken me back to the front view. I'm just going to hit that key there, left click, select it. But you'll notice that it's actually pushed my geometry further back within the viewport. Now I could go down here and go to zoom extents for that viewport. Or I could hit the hotkey Z. And that's what I'm going to do in this instance. So I'm hitting Z and there we go. I mentioned at the beginning that this is the standard viewport configuration. However, we could change our layout if we did so wish. Now, 3ds Max does present us with a number of paths which all lead to the same place. Um, if we wish to change the layout, we could go to the little tick here, the little plus sign here, and go to configure. And we're presented with this menu bar here, and we can see layout. And this shows us a range of layouts that we could select. My preferred layout is actually this one here. So select that, click OK, and there we go. That's my preferred layout. Now I said there was many paths we could follow. We clicked the plus sign there, but I could have gone to Views, Viewport Configuration, here we go again, and now it's showing me Layout, and I can select again. Let's select that one this time. And there we go. So we're not restricted to the standard layout, and as I've just shown, there are many ways to get to the same place. Let's just change that back. So that's where is the stand that's the standard there. And if we pop down to our viewport controls, down to zoom extends all, click there it now nicely frames up all of our viewports. What I'd like to do for the last few minutes of this tutorial is just set up a camera and then you can see a camera view. Um, I'll explain as I'm going along. Okay, well, popping down here to obtain my zoom, up to the top, zoom out there, left, zoom out popping over to my create, I'm in there, select cameras, I'm on standard and I'm going to select a target camera. Popping back over to the top viewport with my left mouse key I'm going to press it down, keep it pressed down and drag this out and just watch the other viewports as well. So now you can see there I've created a camera down in the here in the perspective section and this is my camera view at the moment. I can see here on the left that the camera is fairly low down so just right click on that I'm going to select 
that up there pull the camera up a little bit and again in this viewport you can see what the camera is doing now a target camera has a little box down here for the target I'm going to click on that pull that up and as you can see it's lifting it up there so let go of that that's good popping over to my perspective pop up there select object now what I'm going to do is just pop into where it says perspective up here it says cameras camera one which is the camera I've just set up click on that and now we're looking through the lens of the camera and you will notice down here that those have changed to the camera helpers here is the icon for dolly camera if I click on that now I can zoom in or zoom out well actually it's not zooming it's dolly in the camera in and out I could orbit with this tool here let's orbit there we go so these helpers down here now reflect what I can do with the camera and with that it just about brings this tutorial to a close well I hope you found it useful and in the next tutorial we'll actually take a look at using the command panel so all that remains for me to say is thanks for joining me I'm Mike de Griesley, and you've been watching a cracking CGI production. Catch you later.